Okay, factoring is the fundamental idea of taking a number apart into smaller numbers whose factors when multiplied together equal the number that we started with. So let's take a look at that in detail in order to grasp the idea. And we'll have the number 12. Now 12 isn't a very large number, but it can still be broken apart into smaller numbers. So when we're looking for the factors of 12, we're also asking the question, what are the different ways of writing the number 12? And one way is to have 6 times 2. But we also have 3 times 4, 12 times 1, and we also have 2 times 2 times 3. So there are many different ways of writing the number 12. And in fact, they all equal the same number. One important thing to note here is that we call each of these factors. And specifically, they are factors of the number 12. So this is the notion of factoring. Next, I want to point out something very important that involves this last set here. And looking at this last set, we can see that they contain the smallest factors of 12 because they cannot be divided down any further. And because they cannot be divided down any further, we actually have a special name in mathematics for them, and we call them prime numbers. And by definition, prime numbers are whole numbers that are larger than one. So that's why we don't include the number one, because they are whole numbers larger than one, which includes only two factors, which are one times itself. So two is a prime number because it contains only two factors, which are one times itself, which is two. 3 is also a prime number because it contains just only two factors, which are 1 times itself, which is 3. Now, 6 is not a prime number because it contains more than two factors, which are 2 times 3 and 6 times 1. So, because it's not a prime number, we in fact call it a composite number. And composite numbers are numbers that contain more than two factors. So 12 is an example of a composite number because it contains more than two factors, which are one, two, three, four, five, six different factors. So this is the notion of prime and composite numbers. Okay, so what I want to do now is go over a list of the first few prime numbers that we have. And because a prime number is a whole number that is larger than 1 and contains only two factors, we'll start with the number 2. So 2 is one of our first prime numbers. Next we have 3. 4 is not a prime number because it has more than two factors. So next we have 5. 7, 6, 8, 9, and 10 are composite numbers, which means they have more than two factors. So our next number is 11, 13, 17, 19, and the list continues on. Now there's no exact pattern to find all the prime numbers that exist, but knowing the first few is sufficient enough to help us with factoring. So what I want to do now is show you an easy way of factoring numbers and we'll start with the example number 36 and the method I'm going to show you is called the tree method which starts with our number and at the bottom we're going to draw two branches 
And at the end of the two branches, we're going to try to think of two factors of the number 36. And they can be any two factors that you can think of. So there are many possibilities. Now looking at the number 36, I notice it is an even number, which means I can divide it by the number 2. And that leaves me with 18 on the other side. When I, have mul when I multiply 18 and 2 together, I know it will reverts me back to the number 36. So now looking at these two numbers, I notice that 2 is on my list of prime numbers which means I cannot break it down any further and I'll stop with the number 2 18 is a composite number which means I can break it down further so I'm gonna draw another subtree and think of two factors of the number 18 that I can put here and one that comes to mind are 2 and 9 now again, 2 is a prime number, as I can see here, and I also remember from 2 and 18, so I can stop with number 2. 9 is a composite number, which means I can break it down further, and I'll draw another tree. And again, think of two factors, and one that comes to mind are 3 and 3. Now looking at the number 3, I notice it is on my list of prime numbers, which means it cannot be broken down any further, and I will stop with number 3. Now looking at this overall structure, you can see how the numbers are connected together. 3 and 3 gives me 9, 9 and 2 gives me 18, 18 and 2 reverts me back to 36, which is the number that I started with. So the tree method connects these numbers together. And as you can see on the bottom, we are left with all prime numbers. So what we did has a special name called prime factorization. And what prime factorization is, is taking a number factoring it down to its prime number components. As you can see here, we are left with 2, 2, 3, and 3. And what we can do is write them out, multiply them together, and what we are left with the answer is the number that we started with, which is 36. So you can see how prime numbers are very important in factoring a number. Okay, what I'm going to do now is we're going to factor a larger number that's a little bit more challenging and we'll try the number 1000. Again, we'll start with our number and using the tree method we're going to draw two branches and we're going to try to think of two factors of number 1000 that we can think of. And for me, one that comes to mind are 10 and 100. Because when you multiply 100 times 10, you'll go back to the number 1000. Okay, first we're going to look at the number 10 and we're going to try to think of two factors. And one that comes to mind are 2 and 5. Now looking at 2 and 5, I notice it is on my list of prime numbers, which means it cannot be broken down any further, so I'll stop there. And now I'm left with the number 100, and I'm going to try to think of two factors of number 100 that I can think of, and one that comes to mind are 10 and 10. Now, I remember 10 from my previous number that I just factored, and I also remember that it contains the two factors 2 and 5, so I can go ahead and easily write down the factors. And I also remember that 2 and 5 are on my list of prime numbers, which means they cannot be divided down any further, and I'll stop there. 
So as you can see, we did the prime factorization of the number 1000 and we are left with its prime number components. When we write it out, we are left with 2, 2 times 2, times 5, times 5, times 5, and the result equals the number that we started with.